Kirby Smart and Nick Saban both had their press availability on the Sunday before the national title game, and they both called for NIL regulations. Now, normally when Nick Saban does this, it is kind of a warning shot for the rest of college football, or at least it has proven to be so thus far. He talked about transfers. He talked about playing fast. You know, all, all these different things that he's talked about in the past. Is this what we want football to be, et cetera? He has utilized all of them and come up with some of the best versions of those, right? He has totally taken advantage of the transfer portal in the last two years. He has created an offensive juggernaut in Alabama. All these different things. He brought it up and said that there needs to be some kind of NIL. He is not against players being paid. He said, if we do this, you are really going to have the haves and the have-nots if you just allow open market whatever. My question to you is, is this a reaction only to Texas A&M and that number one recruiting class that they got? Or is this actually them being worried about the uh, better of the entire sport? No, this is 100%. Somebody new took number one because for the last decade, it's been Alabama and Georgia at number one. And somebody new popped up at number one. Your your response to him, this being a warning, no. All right, so I, I hate this man, but I give him his credit, okay? I don't think he was telling people, you don't want to play fast. It's not safe. I think 100% he was afraid of it. All right. Yeah. And you know what he had to do to get better and learn it? He had to sell his soul to somebody he hated, which is Lane Kippen. Okay. He had yes. to bring somebody into his house that he didn't trust, and he didn't like to, to, to teach him this thing that he hates. Okay. And yes, he has all the best players and he has a system for getting all the best players. So, of course, he's going to be capable of going faster, better than you can. Because he's got better players than you. Going fast didn't mean, I'm warning you, if you don't make it slow down, I'm going to dominate the sport. That's bullshit, okay? Correlation is not the same as causation, all right? He was not sending out a warning. He didn't want to sell his soul, okay? Yeah. And he did sell his soul, which is fine. I don't disagree with what he did. But he brought in somebody who he knew could do this thing that he hated having to do. And then transfer portal. He hates this fucking thing. Does he do it better than everybody else? Yes, because he's got the best system in place. This man's got 95 GAs that are all former head coaches at places when everybody <laughs> else got 45 GAs and they're all grad assistants, all right, which is what the GA job was supposed to be. But neither here nor there. He's got grown men selling these kids and scouting these kids and recruiting these kids. And, and because of that, Yes, he's better at it, but he doesn't want to do it. He just has to do it now. So so let's not confuse this as a warning. Once again, this is a, I don't like this because it means I've got to learn something new, put together a new plan, and yes, if he's stuck around long enough in the next five to six years, they might become better than everybody else at this. But it took him a while to catch up to the speed of the game. OK, yeah. to playing fast. He he didn't do that very well. Thankfully, he had the best defenses the world has ever seen. And the other schools that were really good at football at that time were Auburn and, 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 uh, and, and LSU. And and they played exactly like he played. And so if he just could beat them, then it didn't matter. He could win titles that way. Yeah. So this is just a thing where I think he's legitimately bothered by it. He doesn't want to do it because it's another thing. Here's what this does. This puts more power in the hands of boosters at Alabama. And right now, that is the one school that those boosters have zero power. Yes. They very much have been the definition of leave the check, hit the bricks. Okay. You don't call me and you don't tell me how to do anything. But if we're going to do this on the up and up, these coaches aren't allowed to be involved in the negotiations of these things. These coaches aren't allowed to actually go out and get NIL deals for these kids. It is their responsibility to get them on their own. The school cannot help with that. And so this now gives his boosters a lot more power and a lot more influence over his kids. And this is a guy that only knows how to rule with fear and with an iron fist. 
I absolutely think it's a it's something he's afraid of. Does that mean that if he sticks around long enough, he won't be better at it than everyone else? No, that's not what it means at all. But I do think he's going to struggle because while Alabama has some big money folk, at some point in time, they've won a ton. And these big money folks have been given tons and tons of money to the school. Yes. But these other places, they haven't won at all. A&M. Texas, Texas has been a long time. A&M, it's been forever. You've got some big money schools all around the country that haven't won in a long time or haven't won ever. And now they're going to start ponying up. And all they have to do is say, let us get a top five recruiting class four years in a row, and we're at this table. So I don't need you boosters to give for a decade. I need for the next four years for you to give until it hurts to make sure we get the number one, number two, number three, number four, number five recruiting class in the country four years straight. And you do that, and we're playing for this title. You and I obviously feel differently about Nick Saban, which to be expected, but I think that you and I were dead on the exact same when thinking about this exact situation. My thought process was Nick Saban does not want to have to count on boosters for anything other than dropping a check. That's right. And in this situation, it all comes down to them actually securing these deals with the kids, right? Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.